welcome, Guardians, to episode 274 of Destiny Massive Breakdowns. As ever, I am your host, Kit Kaja, and I am here to bring you a, a very uh, a different episode from some of the ones that we've had lately. Uh, my guest today is someone that many of you are likely not familiar with, and I promise you, your destiny experience and destiny knowledge is the worst for it if you're not. Uh, that said, many uh, Destiny Massive Breakdowns Discord regulars will already be familiar with today's guest, uh, and so you are ahead of the game. I'd like to welcome to the show, Mossy. Thanks for hey. having me on. It is uh, it is my pleasure, Mossy. I'm I'm very excited for this one. It is rare that I get to sit down and talk to another Destiny spreadsheeter like yourself. Uh, so it's it's good to be able to have that camaraderie and that shared experience of uh, <laughs> trying to make spreadsheet formulas work and trying to troubleshoot them when suddenly they they just don't. Um, yes. Well, and it's a uh, it's an honor. You're uh, in my in my very long list of uh, of Destiny uh, bookmarks on uh, on my browser that I've accumulated over years. Yours is actually uh, the fourth one down. Hey, out of probably over a hundred now. That it's is one of the first ones I discovered. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, man. And that's actually like uh, I I didn't know that I was aspiring uh, to achieve that, but actually now that you say that, like. I I really do want to be in people's destiny bookmark lists. Like that's <laughs> that's life that's life goals right there. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's uh I you know I don't have a hundred. I think I have like thirty. Um, I mean maybe it's maybe it's not a hundred. Yeah. Uh, Sixty nine. Hey, oh, nice. Oh, there you go. There you go. Well, I'll I'll take number four. That's pretty good. Um, and I actually. I I cheat now because I stopped adding them because other people started making lists of useful resources and now I just use like the link tree and the Discord to to find stuff um, if I don't have it separately. Um, so that's that's how I usually get to your sheet. That's actually a great tip uh, for listeners and Discordians. Um, the Destiny Science Channel has some pin links. And um, one of those is a link tree to all kinds of fantastic Destiny resources, including uh, the outgoing damage scaling spreadsheet, um, which has been created by Mossy, who's been doing some some really creative uh, and very, very useful damage testing uh, in Destiny, which is uh, why we're here today. So um, before we get into all of that, uh, first up... Got to do, got to do just a quick real life check in. Mossy, how's life? How are things? Good for you, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, I didn't know you'd be asking me about my personal life. Oh, I know. Really uh, digging in behind the scenes here. Uh, yeah, things are great. It's uh, I'm I, I love the fall. I'm happy it's uh, turning into fall, and um, the game is going great, and uh, I'm on the biggest destiny podcast so that's going great for me hey. not that i have any not that i have any kind of <laughs> not that i'm any kind of content creator that needs the uh that needs the exposure but um it's still great anyway well you know i've, I've been on a i've been on kind of a long string of, of bringing on uh names that you know lots and lots of people are familiar with um but ever so often you know if, if somebody is out there doing stuff that is just really really helpful and useful uh, for people to know. I feel like it's like, who cares about the exposure or the name recognition? It's like, let's talk to somebody um, who's going to give people knowledge that's going to help them enjoy Destiny more. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah. That's, that's I, like I major props, dude, because uh, you, you have helped make my spreadsheet more accurate, so... Yeah, I actually need to keep. I need to. I need to double check. I think you still have a couple of uh, a couple of numbers that are wrong. I know I do. Number number. <laughs> I know I do. This uh, and so actually this weekend I will be doing major a major overhaul to the spreadsheet. I've been getting some traveling out of the way and getting some just like enjoying of destiny out of the way. Um, 
you know, I went uh, camping and hiking in, in Big Bend uh, last weekend. And so I've, I was gone for four days and um, I've just been been doing a lot since the new season launched. But yeah, I, I send, yeah t- tell me, and I always tell people this, tell me what's wrong in the spreadsheet because I, I try to validate as much as I can, but there are like literally a thousand use case scenarios that I haven't thought of or that I just haven't double checked. So, um, it's, uh, it's always good to have that, that backup. Um, but yeah, I, I actually, we could even, we could even talk about it in the show here, uh, in just a minute. Uh, we can, you can, <laughs> you can tell me what the I'm wrong about. The most thrilling episode ever. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Before we get into all of that, uh, let's, uh, let's take a brief moment here. I do want to say thank you to our ongoing Guardian sponsors. Uh, these Guardians uh, give generously every single month to support Destiny Massive Breakdowns, uh, to support PVE, Podcast versus Enemies, and to support uh, Star, War, uh, Star Wars Beneath Twin Suns, um, the Massive Breakdowns fan podcast for Star Wars, which is just a ton of fun and has absolutely nothing to do with <laughs> really what we all kind of got started uh, doing this for, but, um, without further ado, thank you so much to the following, the Shazzle, Blackhammer Tech, Deacon, Zensocal, Impetus, Starscream, Askey and Monk, This Moment, Binary Wolf, and Sylve. I deeply appreciate all of you, as I do all of our ongoing patrons for your incredible generosity. And, uh, Stay tuned at the end of the episode. I do have a shout out and thank you to a new patron as well as some fantastic reviews to share. Um, so we will get to that uh, toward the end of the show. But we are we're experimenting with this new format here. So we'll see we'll see how many of you stay tuned. I've got the analytics. I have the power. Um, so if uh, you know if, if we can continue to spread the word and uh, and and share the stuff that gets people excited about the show then i will uh i will continue to do it this way all right without any further housekeeping nonsense mossy let's let's dive right in let's talk some some uh kind of about first how you got into doing destiny spreadsheet stuff uh and so we actually uh court uh who hosts Podcast versus enemies, and a uh, long time, long time Destiny scientist himself um, wanted to know, and, and this is a question that I usually like to ask guests, anyways. Uh, how, when, and why did you start doing what you're doing? How did you decide, hey, I've got so much free time that I'd like to do research on a video game? Like, what was the catalyst that? Uh, uh-huh that puts you in that, that mental place. (laughs) That dark, dark mental place. I I ask Uh, this as someone who is also in that place. So, (laughs) um, I, I, I wish, I wish I had, I wish I had the free time. I I have, I have a full-time job and two kids and, and a wife. This is like, this is, it wasn't like, Oh yeah, I could use something to do with my time. This was like, Hey, this is really annoying. And it just became a hyper focus that I like, spent my nights once both kids were asleep once my my work was all done all the dishes were done i was like i need to figure this out about destiny it mostly started when i uh when looking at um the different you know youtube videos around you know looking at new weapons and their dps and then comparing sky warrior sheet that does cali and uh rock dcs and my axis sheet that uses Zulmac, yeah. and all of them had different numbers, and it seemed like everything is sort of talking past each other. And how do you compare anything? So I'm like, there must be some way to unify this and figure out how all these da- different damage numbers relate to each other. So that's kind of how how it started. And there, there, the one sort of actual like main catalyst that was like, oh, maybe this is possible, was there was a. Uh, like some at some point mid last year, I think maybe for season of the loss, the big update that for the first time in the patch notes they mentioned PVE damage bonus, right? And I was like, oh, so there's it's not like 
it's not like a random PV value and a random PVP value, and like you know they have two things that are independent of each other. There's actually a link between the PV da PVP damage. There's like consistent multipliers that can get you to the damage you see in PVE. Yeah, so that was sort of when I saw that I was like, okay, this might be my quest, and uh, I'm happy to say I actually seem to have figured it out. Yeah, your your results have been very accurate, um, and uh, and uh, not only for for PVE but for for PVP as well, um, because the two uh, the two damage values are are in fact linked mathematically, um, mm -hmm. which you know it's it's funny. So you're, you're describing a problem that I, I think probably a lot of us have seen at various points and thought, "Gosh, that is." really kind of aggravating that there's not an easier way to get to this or or, or at the very least like a more direct way to get to yeah. what these damage values actually are um without just like physically doing it every single time um and <sighs> yeah exactly and I, and uh the nice thing about now that it's sort of i've, I've got the infrastructure when the patch notes are sufficiently uh, detailed enough that they say, okay, plus 10% against miners, or uh, you know, an increase in uh, this this kind of PV, PVP damage. Uh, because now I know that any damage in PVP actually cascades all the way up to PVE damage, you can change that underlying value, and then you can see how it will affect uh, PVE even, you know, those buffs. Yeah. Yeah, and that that is the the really cool thing that you're doing with your sheet um that i i want people to know about because i i you know i don't know uh obviously like how many people out there in in the wild as i like to say have uh, have seen it but uh, i hope a lot and i hope that uh part of the uh part of the the catalyst effect of this episode is is to lead people to check it out uh and to kind of spread that information because having accurate damage numbers um as somebody who's trying to make content about destiny is like vital and having accurate damage numbers as a player who's trying to plan a loadout is even more vital um because that's the whole point of all of this is to to be able to like enjoy the game and i feel like uh, you know especially the direction that destiny is going right now um with more of an an RPG-esque, more of an MMO-esque flavor to things, being able to to play optimally um, without having to, you know, e each one of us spend hours testing or or being good at math or any of the number of things that, you know, will lead people to be daunted and to say, ah, well, I'll just guess. Um, it's uh, It's really valuable. It's really, really valuable. Um, so we're going to, we're going to be using some of this, uh, some of this destiny math today, um, to talk about a new perk that has entered the game that does some really interesting things to, uh, PVP in terms of like, uh, especially like, uh, kind of the more like adjusted time to kill values, which I think a lot of people will be interested in, um, but yeah, that's so, that, so that's cool because that <laughs> that's a, a story that I, I think I I sympathize with. You know, I, I also I have a wife. I have only one child, fortunately, um, but two cats. So that's like not remotely uh, equivalent to a child, but very annoying at times. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> no, I mean it's it's a, it's a thing inside your house that that demands attention. Yeah, um, I had one of them trying to we we. So I, I read that like the average cat meows like eleven times a day or something. Uh, so my daughter's cat meows like eleven times an hour. Wow! Uh, and that's that's if he's chill. Like if he's hungry, it's like constant. Um, and he's on a diet because he's a little chubbers. Uh, so he's not super happy about it. But yeah, he, I was on a conference call for work today, and he was just like going hard in the background. <laughs> um, I, had, so anyway, I had no idea until recently that, that cat meows are an entirely human-directed behavior. 
cats do not meow to each other. Yeah, there's so my my wife and daughter are huge cat lovers. So I, I learn all kinds of random facts about like what different cat sounds mean, and then I, I generally forget them within a couple of days because I'm a, I'm a in you know don't at me for this, folks. But uh, I'm I'm a cat tolerator. I I don't mind them, but uh, I'm not like a huge cat lover of any kind. Yeah, I'm I'm allergic to cats, so I I, I get ah. I get a pass at having. I that that's my excuse yeah. to prevent cats from from being in my house. Nothing we you can. Have, we, have, <laughs> we have a small dog. I should probably uh, the 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 Destiny Science or the Massive Breakdowns Discord is is a lot of is a big fan of various pet pictures. I don't think I've uh, I've shared mine yet. It is obviously yeah. Jasper is well loved in uh, in this community. Indeed, yes. Um, yeah, no, there there are a lot of. Uh, cute pet lovers in the uh, in the destiny massive breakdowns discord that is for sure um i've even posted a couple of pictures from time to time uh i i'll say i, I think my daughter's cat was cuter a year ago uh when he was like the size of a gerbil um but anyways <laughs> that's neither here nor there so uh fall and this is a, a follow-up question actually from court um, which I thought was really great. So I want to go ahead and ask it now. Um, in in the course of like working out the math uh, behind all of this, is there anything that like really surprised you in terms of the relationships between the damage numbers or that made you, you know, kind of have that like eureka moment where you're like, ah, that's why this is the way that it is? Um... That's a good question. I, I mean, I think the the entire process was just eureka moment after eureka moment. Like, there's so many different, um, so many different mechanics and so many different scalers that all just build upon each other. Um, that I think w when I actually finally figured out when I when I cleared every managed to clear everything away and um, after especially after getting to because I started this just before Witch Queen, uh, once Witch Queen launched and we got the Enclave, and I could see, basically, Enclave gives you scaled up uh, non-combatant, but PvE damage. Yeah. It stripped away everything except for that PvE damage bonus, so I was finally able to find, figure out what that patch note meant uh, around, uh, you know, slug shotguns. Got, I have a 1.2x uh PV damage boost on top of uh, everything that they scale up for for different um, um, different kinds of combatants, you know, miners versus elites versus mini bosses and champions. Um, the other the other really cool one was more was more recent actually um, that um, so I have basically this this map uh, and th they call that out in, a, in I think a twelve or a patch note they call I think they call it the combatant map uh, bungee that. Is a different multiplier for every weapon archetype. So auto rifles, scout rifles, you know, shotguns. Each each have their own sort of multiplier for each different combatant type for elites, miners, mini bosses, bosses, and vehicles. So right. There's five different ones. Um, I found out that dragonfly does the same damage. So dragonfly is on a bunch of different guns. Dragonfly does the same damage in PvP against everything. Um, but in PVE, it does different damage against everything and for di for every different weapon. And it turns out um, it, uh, it, it correlates exactly to this combatant map. So it takes on the multiplier of the weapon that it's on uh, to do more or less damage. And uh, this has uh, great effects when you pair it with a, a machine gun uh, because with the most recent buffs, Machine gun guns now have a, a 4.2 times multiplier uh, against miners in PVE. So machine guns just hit like a truck uh, for for their dragonfly and their firefly in PVE. Spread the word. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good note because that's not a perk that I normally look for on a machine gun. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, absolutely meta. 
that's yeah, that's that's very good to know. Uh, it's <laughs> honestly, I, I guess I would say it's probably a perk that I specifically don't look for on a machine gun. Typically, um, I really should be looking for PVE focused stuff on machine guns because there's almost no situation where I'm going to take one into the crucible. Yeah. Uh, and I yeah. don't, I don't really want there to be a situation where I think that's an optimal choice because that means that other people are also going to be doing it, and that if, if they're actually good in the PvP, like that's that's a really bad thing for the sandbox. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to make a note here. Firefly on a machine gun. All right. That that yeah. shifts that shifts my uh, my checklist for whether or not I scrap something now. Well, and especially on a, on a heavy. I mean, obviously, this is a crucible podcast, so we shouldn't you know digress too much on on PVE. But we can talk about if it. If you're a using a machine gun as a heavy, you're probably doing a decent amount of bad clear with it. And yeah. Uh, and yeah. So yeah, dragonfly. It does. Uh, yeah, basically, it does like I don't know two thirds the damage of a of a, of an ignition. If if you want that for for context. All right. Ignitions are pretty powerful. Yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty decent there. Okay, so I guess like I don't know. I, I haven't, I have not looked because this is kind of a, a tangent. But I don't know if incandescent rolls on a machine gun. But it sounds like that would be also pretty stellar to go with. But anything that anything that explodes things, yes, pretty, pretty good choice. Gosh, and I'm thinking about a machine gun with explosive rounds. Also, have not looked for that. Hmm. Oh man, I just I feel like I mean I feel like the gut shot is kind of a way to get some of the feel of explosive payload onto more rapid fire weapons. Because like I know we're gonna talk about gut shot a little later, but like yeah, at least in I, I mean in PvP, obviously uh, explosive payload does the same damage, and time payload does the same damage as regular. But in in um, in PvE, it does like a a fifteen percent buff for body shots, which is which is not bad because it's entirely for free. You get it all the time, um, and Gutshot gives you you know twenty percent just for body shots, uh, which is I mean you don't get the the you know the area effect, but you don't have you know I don't think we're ever they're ever going to give us something as broken as you know explosive payload on a on a seven twenty auto rifle, right? <laughs> like I, we can dream. Yeah, I I really kind of hope not. That would be pretty That would be pretty so devastating think, to try to fight. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I think gut shot might be the the closest thing we're ever going to get. Well, that's that's okay. That's okay. And I believe uh yeah, I, well I guess you you know, we've so there so there's the preview for a little later in the episode here we're going to dive into gut shot on uh, all of the weapon types that it currently rolls on, and then we'll talk about uh, some of those specific guns that it does roll on and whether or not it's worthwhile to have it on those weapons or if if maybe there's something else you should be looking for in that slot. Uh, and I do want to say I, I, this is a Mercules special, I believe. He is taking credit for designing this perk, and I'm a fan. I, I like it. I like getting some value for uh, what feels like a fair trade. And I guess we'll talk about exactly how much value you get from it in PvP in just a little bit here. I'm not I'm not sure. It, I feel like you get a pretty fair amount of value from it in PvE. Aim assist is obviously always helpful, but it's a lot less of a concern when your targets don't have uh, Titan... Uh, the the Titan thruster to get out of the way. Uh, aim assist super helpful <laughs> when people yeah. are moving like that, or Icarus dashing across your screen, or Hunter dodging, or any of the other nonsense that goes on in the Crucible these days that leads to me just playing with a bow and trying to stay out of the fight. Um, so, I mean, I, in that in that same token, you know, it's easier to aim, so you're more likely to be hitting your headshots anyway. Yeah. In PVE, and and as of now, it's it, I think that shot is exclusively a, a fourth column perk. So you're taking it instead of a uh, any any damage perk. Right. It is. So I mean, it, yeah. 
Go I ahead. Feel, I feel like not nine nine hundred the the lightweight SMG. Like uh, if you can get a roll on the out of bounds, that might be the closest thing because your SMGs are always just spray and pray in PVE. Like you're barely you're barely gonna hit many headshots on that because you're just running around trying to mow down ads as quick as you can. And a persistent 20% bonus, yeah, is, uh, is pretty nice. Yeah, raises the, uh, the body a lot closer to, uh, to the crits. Um, and uh, I also, you know, I, I, so I, I'm a sidearm enjoyer uh, in, all, in all modes of play. I really, I really enjoy, especially my incandescent drang. It's always good times. Um, but I love having uh, Allied Demand back in the sandbox, which is uh, the same archetype, but it's in the kinetic slot, which frees up my loadout choices a little bit. And so having an option like Gutshot available is something that I definitely got excited to see. Uh, yeah. Well, we're, uh, yeah, and I think that's the one that benefits well, one of uh, one of the most. So before we before we dive into that, I'm I'm curious from a from a personal standpoint, is there anything that you have like tried to do or wanted to do with your spreadsheet um, that has turned out to be like say you know anywhere from two to five times as much work as you expected it to be at the outset? Um. I mean, this, this, the, the, my latest undertaking with figuring out, um, uh, enemy health across different activities has been, has been quite large because there are so many different enemies. I was hoping there would be like consistent multipliers, but no, everything seems to be quite uniquely hand tuned. Um, there's about, uh, I have it here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 different tiers of enemies with different sort of HPs. And like some of them are, some of them are like grouped together. So like uh, centurions, captains, you know, the, the sort of mid tier enemies across, right. uh, uh, across the different races are all the same. They all have 300 HP base, but then there's like unique tiers, like exploder, exploder tanks have their own tiers. Uh, incendiars have their own tiers weirdly. Um, <laughs> the other, the other, so, I mean, that one is just like, I should have expected that, you know, in hindsight, of course that would take a long time to figure out the one weird one that I have not been able to crack that seemed like it would be really simple is, is timed payload. Um, for some reason I cannot figure out what the multiplier it gives for, um, for headshots. So explosive payload makes sense. You know, it splits off half the damage into an explosion, buffs that uh, buffs that from your body damage by thirty percent. Right. So base body is, and then and then what it does to the impact if you hit a crit, it actually incre it doubles the precision increase. So on a on an adaptive uh, hand cannon, the precision multiplier is one point five. So it would take the extra point five and double it. So now your precision multiplier is two, uh, which works simple enough. And then timed payload does something else entirely that like I can't make consistent across any of my testing, and so it's still just um, it's still just a mystery. And if anybody huh. can figure out, I will uh, I will very much appreciate it. Well, that sounds like a uh, a good item to uh, to squirrel away uh, and hope that we have another visit from uh from a developer to ask about um that yeah i i'm i'm very curious as well timed payload is a is a funky perk it felt like when it first came out i was like oh maybe they just don't want to give us explosive payload ever again you know and this is like the substitute and it's like well okay it's like you know it's similar enough, and in PVE, it's fine. Um, and just to, to confirm for everyone, yes, those are PVE damage numbers, in case that wasn't yeah. 100% yeah, yeah. clear. Obviously, <laughs> it's not doing anything to the crit multiplier in, in the Crucible. But yeah, it it, it always just kind of struck me as a weird perk. Um, 
and I never yeah. tried to work out the the damage numbers. I I did notice that they were kind of wonky. Like they didn't seem like they made sense from like weapon to weapon and just across activities. Like it was just wasn't very consistent. But I never sat down and and wrote them all down to really make a study of it and try to figure it out. So yeah, kudos to you for attempting to tackle that. Best of best of luck, traveler speed. Yeah, every once in a while, I, I sort of just open up the little bit of my spreadsheet that I have the damage numbers, and I just stare at it, and like <laughs> multiply different things together, sort of add things. And I was like, no, nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing works out. Nothing is consistent. Um, I mean, thankfully, it's only on. It's literally on two architect. Oh wait, no wait. One eighties have the. Yeah, so it's only on hand cannons, but it is on one twenties and on uh, and one eighties and one fifties. Yeah, which have different uh, precision multipliers, and it, yeah. and I can't square anything across those two. Yeah, yeah. I I've gotten I've got nothing. Um, I I feel your pain though. Uh, when I was, I've been trying to add in some of the exotic weapons that have a highly variable times to kill uh, for Crucible things like Hawk Moon, where it's like, how many crits have you landed? Um, and, uh, boy, it is occasionally, <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I know when my formula is wrong <laughs> because suddenly the time to kill is negative 0.5 and <laughs> I'm just like, well, that would be very, uh, typical of destiny for someone to die before I shoot them. But, um, certainly doesn't seem right. So, yeah, yeah. I guess the, uh, the, uh, the dead man's tail change must be, uh, must be nice for, your uh, your spreadsheet trying to keep track of that yeah so that is one that i have not that i have not added um the uh, the change i should say um so that that i still have to update that's that's on the list of so many things that need to change hopefully i'll get them all done this weekend and it'll it'll be a brand new spreadsheet for everybody um and if I forget something, I'm sure someone will tell me. But but now you don't need to keep track of a different damage number for each different headshot. And sometimes getting the buff before you even hit the headshot. Indeed. But see, so I get to take that out. But now I have Quicksilver Storm, which is a whole new set of problems. Uh, so I have to... Quicksilver Storm, for, for those who don't know, and I'll probably do a, a more thorough breakdown in a future episode, um, but it, it launches a tracking rocket after 10 consecutive hits on a target. Uh, now, 10 hits on a target in PvP is possibly enough to kill them uh, with that auto rifle, especially if you're landing your crits, but uh, in many cases it won't be, and you'll end up firing more than 10 shots which means it's going to launch that tracking rocket, which has its own damage. And that means that I have to write uh, conditional damage formulas based on the number of shots hit on the target so that every 10, it will add in a rocket round. And I haven't quite... I know I can do it. I'm confident I'll work it out. But I haven't, I haven't quite mathed out how that's going to gonna play yet and i'm trying to move to a system where i have just a, a table in the sheet that has every possible damage modifier and what it does to every weapon and i'd like to have ultimately even all of the exotics in there but i feel like quicksilver might just have to be custom coded into the sheet because just because yeah. Yeah, that's that's a that's a lofty goal. I mean, uh, yeah, for for there, there's this is like this is like the deep pain of 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 spreadsheeting. So I I I take the sort of the coward's way out. There, there's there's a couple of there's a couple of ways you you do it. I take the coward's way out and just for things that I have that different damage numbers, I just do a different row for each damage for each damage. So like I have in my sheet, you know, different grenades and some grenades, especially like the new uh, the new touch of thunder pulses, they you know they yeah. do a different damage number for each different pulse. So now I have one grenade with uh, 
Oh, wait, no. Yeah, one grenade with six, seven different rows uh, in, in my spreadsheet. And, you know, it's it, I could eventually, you know, put them put them down in, into uh, one row. Uh, so far, my spreadsheet is not very much focused on being user friendly. Yeah, it is focused on being accurate. But yeah, you, you can either do that or you can like try and average it out inside one row. You can try and, you know, do some other crazy, ridiculous custom coding things to kind of squeeze it into one row and, you know, make it all work out. Um, yeah, lots of every every way leads leads to pain in uh, in in the spreadsheeting world. It, yeah, it is it is a constant struggle, um, and I'm I'm really trying to to take some steps to future proof the sheet so that it, going down you know down the road, looking ahead, Bungie keeps dropping wacky damage perks on us that work one way on some weapons and another way on other weapons. All I have to do is go and change one table and everything will be correct. Um, and then my good friend over there at Bungie develops a perk that offers a damage bonus only to body shot damage. And now my table is going to have to be twice as big so that I can record for every perk what it does to crits and what it does to body damage. Because, of course, <laughs> I have to do that. Um... Because the alternative is to custom code it for for just that perk. But then, you know, what'll happen is next season they'll launch another perk that only does something to crit damage, and suddenly I'm now custom coding for two perks, and I'm I'm just doing even more work than I was before. Uh, every time I have to update it. So I I completely I completely feel that like Maybe this isn't the optimal way to do it, but I feel like from a ease of use for me and from like an ease of use for for an end user, for somebody who's trying to you look at the sheet and figure out what different damage bonuses do, I think this is the long term solution. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put up and shut up about it. <laughs> I, I wish you luck, and and if you need help, um, I the one th the one thing that will make this easier, just looking at the 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 uh, the formulas, is to is to move from your uh, what I'll affectionately call the rat's nest of, oh, yes. of different if if statements. We're going with the lookup. There you are. Yeah. V yeah. Lookup. Okay. Yeah. I so I've got I've got a new there'll be a new tab in the spreadsheet. Um, this has been a year for new tabs. Had to add a new tab for glaives, and uh, now we'll have a new tab for uh, for data. And so it's going to have a massive table of perks for damage and a massive table of perks for rate of fire. Um, and we're just going to, instead of having every cell having all these, these if-then statements, we're just going to do lookups. And it's going to automatically math the damage and the rate of fire for you, uh, for every perk. Um, the fusion rifles will finally be reunited with all others. You won't have to uh, make a copy and then select which version of a fusion rifle you have. I'm going to put accelerated coils and liquid coils into the main modifier section. Um, yeah, I didn't intend to announce all of this, but just talking about this, it sort of like feels like the right time to say it. Um, I am, I am, I am curious. While we're just talking about spreadsheeting in general and 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 your spreadsheet, so did you did did you and Merck make this together? Like, what was the or is this all you? And what was the if it was both of you? Like, what was the breakdown of of uh, of effort? So that that is a fantastic question, and um, this uh, this spreadsheet is uh, ninety percent uh, Mercules. So he he laid all the groundwork. I have over the years um, stepped in to help with formulas and getting weapons added to the sheet, um, double checking that stats are correct, and and kind of doing a lot of uh, housekeeping type stuff and and sort of verifying that uh, you know minimal amount of mistakes are made and and that everything sort of works as intended. Um, but yeah, he laid all of the groundwork. Uh, for this spreadsheet and 
and full credit uh, belongs at, at his door for it. Um, so my, uh, my dream now is to uh, take it into the future, take it, take it to, uh, to the next level here by adding in some, uh, some more user-friendly uh, formulas um, that hopefully will also help with uh, with folks out there who are modding the sheet because I know there are there are a few of you listening who like to take this sheet and then do other things with it or add in other stuff that I don't um, things like disruption break that I still just haven't decided on a good way that I'm comfortable adding it in uh, yeah. some, somebody has to be damaged um, before you can do it and so the only way I can think of is if when you select disruption break it changes the HP I just don't. I just don't know if I want to go that route. We'll see. Um, after I've got damage reduction and overshields and healing uh, added in as modifiers for time to kill, maybe I'll look at disruption break again. Well, yeah, because it would be it would be a different it would be a different HP that you're left at. Yeah. In every scenario, the only one the only one that's like nice and clean is um, oh the waveframe uh, from two seasons ago because it does exactly 130 damage uh and i guess that's only clean uh, on on 10 resilience it will exactly break your shield and it has disruption break to uh you know take you the rest of the way yeah yeah and so you know disruption break is uh, it's a 50 percent damage buff in pvp it's massive um but like you know it's essentially just allowing you to one shot somebody after breaking their shield with a disruption break weapon which is great um but i'm not sure it's really uh, useful in terms of the the time to kill spreadsheet. So I don't know. I look I look forward to to hearing from people who disagree with me on that because I if there is a good a good case for it that I haven't thought of, I'm I'm open to adding it. I know Iceborne has been uh, suggesting it for a while, and uh, I continue to toy with the idea. But it's a funny it's a funny perk. For PvP especially. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, the only the main sort of use case in PvP is 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 uh sorry, in PvE is is barriers. And you I mean you already have Arbalist that has it as an intrinsic. So it's like you don't really need anything else. Right. If you're gonna if you're gonna build into disruption break, you've already got Arbalist that does it and then takes advantage of it right away. Yeah, buffs itself. Yeah. Um, hence why Arbalist is <laughs> the, uh, the number one PVE in-game exotic, uh, yeah. for, for strikes, right? So, um, hard not to equip it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's, I think it's in every single one of my, uh, like strike loadouts and lost sector loadouts. If there's, if there's a, a barrier champ, like I just go with it. And even if there's not, possibly I go with it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's telling that even in this season where we have anti-barrier sniper, you're like, ah, I could, I could, you know, move around my arms to put six energy into that and then have something that doesn't also work on every other shield in match game. Or I could just, just put on Arbalest and just not worry about it. I, you know, I got to be honest. I've, uh, I've not unlocked anti barrier sniper on either my hunter or my warlock. Uh, I don't count the titan because I don't play in game with it. But yeah, if I did, still wouldn't unlock it on the titan. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Well, so we've we've talked about spreadsheeting for a hot minute here. Let's let's go ahead and just casually transition to talking about gut shot uh so gut shot is brand new perk this season um we've, we've kind of talked about it a little bit here but uh so essentially how it works gut shot straight while aiming down sights increases body shot damage uh and reduces aim assist uh so the exact aim assist penalty i think is still the subject of uh some discussion in terms of, of exactly how much it's taken away in PVE and PVP. 
Um, it's not a huge amount, but it's not a small amount either, um, is essentially what I would say. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think I'm, uh, I'm interested to see what people's testing smarter, smarter and more devoted people's testing than me. Cause looking at those accuracy cones, you know, a hit fire is, is the definition of, 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 of pain for me. Uh, but from from the regular one, it, yeah, it's not a small, it's not a small dip. Like some people are saying, some around the range of like thirty percent less aim assist. Like it's it's not it's not insignificant. Yeah, I believe the uh, the Destiny Data Compendium suggests thirty five, but it's a, with a question mark. Um, and I, I haven't heard anything more accurate than that. And it's it's not something I've yet had a chance to to verify. Um, that said, uh, it is given a nice bonus to body shot damage. Uh, so in PvP for bows and hand cannons, it's uh, 20% damage buff, and it's 10% for the other primary weapons that have it, auto rifles, pulse rifles, sidearms, and submachine guns. Um, and, you know, I, I got to say, I, I've not actually looked at the damage buff in PvE at all, but I... This is one I where I'm thinking it's the same. Yeah, it's 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 the same. Uh, so there there is a weird thing. Um, speaking of uh, of of spreadsheets uh, that I've 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 confirmed it it's it it does work in uh, PVE and PVP um, because I've done this testing in the Enclave. It actually gives you a very tiny tiny buff to precision damage as well. Uh, something around how they how Bungie is coding uh, the precision multipliers. I don't think they have the tools to just you know do a straight if if you're buffing the damage by one point one to just lower the precision multiplier by one point one. They like set them set the value manually, and it's such that like you basically get like a zero point two. I think no zero point zero two percent buff to precision damage. Like huh. nothing that that nothing that you will ever notice in PvP or PvE. Um, but it's enough to like you know in a high end activity where your damage is, damage number is really high. Like it goes up by like maybe ten, uh, ten damage points. Um, so yeah, just weird weird fun fact. I uh, I, I still haven't gotten around to actually testing it on the uh, the four fifty. But I'm really hoping we get the return of like the the zero point zero four percent buff to auto <laughs> rifles. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's very interesting. Um, I didn't know that. That's 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 another question. I guess I'm I'm curious to ask how this perk was constructed because of course I I didn't know about this perk when I was last uh, able to ask these kinds of questions. Um, but I, this is one where I'm very curious what went on behind the scenes in terms of setting it up and making it work because we don't really we've definitely seen stuff in the past like box breathing where you know we're getting big precision damage multipliers um or you know obviously hawk moon like i mentioned earlier but getting oh well, i guess hawk moon's just a damage multiplier actually so i take that back um but no, uh, i think you're right i think i think it only procs oh my gosh i think i think it's oh just, i need to do some testing i i'm so because there's there's a couple of enemies, uh, Keitel, uh specifically in in PVE that actually increase your precision multiplier. So the weapons that do more uh, that have a higher crit multiplier do even more damage uh, on Keitel. And I think the Hawkmoon buff might only be to precision damage for that final shot, huh, and that okay. might just do boat loads of damage on her. Yeah, I believe it would. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, so they, they've this is the first time we've seen something that is only buffing body shot damage um, that I'm aware of. And that has really kind of thrown me for a loop is generally, you know, we kind of really go the opposite direction here in terms of like making your crit damage higher. Um, but this is a this is a very unique perk and it's so easy to activate, you know, just aim down sights. And yeah. accept that you'll have less aim assist. Um, just cope. Yeah, just cope. Uh, you know, I, obviously it's also fortunate on a lot of these weapons, you can actually uh, pair it with moving target. So you end up with just like the same 
aim assist, more or less. Um, so it's moving targets giving you plus 10 aim assist when you aim down sights. Well, we can talk about we can talk about some perk pairings later, but uh, that's just like the first thing I noticed looking at this perk. It's like, oh, it's the it's the the perfect pairing with moving target. Then I have two perks and I just get a body shot damage buff. Yeah, and then I thought, yeah, ideally, yeah. If, if it does cancel out. Yeah. yeah. So that's probably, the hope. You probably have to build into it a bit more with like maybe moving target plus, tar you know, two targeting mods plus, I don't know. I guess there's nothing else you can do that reliably increases your aim assist. Maybe like Whisper of Hedrons. Yeah. Maybe back up there. Throw some helmet mods on, you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, I I like to run double helmet mods anyways, right? So it's like, you know, let's let's just lean fully into it. Well, let's let's talk about what is actually like how this is actually working out in the crucible uh for people who who might be using this perk, you know, what's what it's doing to uh time to kill for them. Yeah. Um, and, and and if it's worthwhile, you know, it's kind of the uh <laughs> the 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 outlay of that that put the value judgment on on the numbers uh so first up and i keep accidentally closing the file but first up we've got uh pulse rifles and i think you have this in front of you if you want to yeah so yeah bit. so um yeah should we start with the the 390s there's there's two of them two of the adaptive pulses that can roll it. It's the uh, the King's Fall one, Smite of Moraine, and oh, I've lost. Um, uh, so I believe it's Yesteryear is the other one, which is uh, I think I think it's just a world drop. Uh, I think it's Gambit. Oh, is it Gambit? Yeah. I must have I must yeah, have yeah. accidentally played some Gambit. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, that. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, you uh, it's can, green. You can, it's it's got to be Gambit. Yeah, that's that's the uh, so you might get it with, from Gambit. Uh, you can't focus it uh, because it's it's the current season. Yeah. But you can get the enhanced version on Spider Marine because it's craftable. Um, so yeah, in terms of optimal uh, time to kill, it's not doing very much for you. So the optimal time to kill is is. 0.93 seconds. Uh, so that's, you know, midway through two bursts. Or sorry, at the beginning of at, at the beginning of three bursts. Yep. Um, and it will move you to uh, to get guaranteed kill against 10 resilience. It doesn't change it. It's it's still uh, six head, one body. But uh, if you get two heads uh, and five bodies, It'll move you from killing at uh, four resilience. Now with gut shot, you can kill against six res six resilience. So, I guess that's nice. Um, the thing that jumps out uh, out to me though is like if you if especially for these higher rate of fire weapons and specifically for pulses, like if you're already heading into the you you already need to get to the the third burst. For, for 390s to right. get your optimal time to kill. So like going to to the third bullet in that is not adding too much more to get to the 1.07 right. time to kill. An extra four frames. Yeah, exactly. And for that now, you know, you, you get, um, so if you're doing nine bullets, you go from needing six bullets to kill uh, 10 resilience to... Um, to, to to seven, yeah. So you get an extra you you get an extra, uh, you know, forgiven body shot, and two, uh, if you want to lower it down to eight resilience, which is not bad. Like, I feel like you know, ten resilience is what we want to be aiming for for everything. But like, if you're not if you're not a if you're not a titan, like I feel like against most titans in Crucible, you can safely assume they're going to be ten resilience, but. For you know some hunters and warlocks out there, they might be trying to, and they're like, ah, I can't, I can't quite get up there, so they might just be stuck at stuck at eight. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's it's doing some interesting things for those sort of less than perfect times to kill. Um, 
given you a little bit of forgiveness in terms of taking down higher resiliences with slightly less accurate shooting. Um, and I think with, you know, with the adaptives, you know, like, like you pointed out here, we're, we're talking about you, you need three bursts anyways. Um, you, you have to fire that third burst unless you have another damage buff active of some kind. If you have Radiant or something else going on, you know, that's obviously kind of completely changing the situation and, and shifting the numbers around. Um, we're not going to get, I, I think we're not going to, not going to go down that rabbit hole. There are a lot of potential damage buffs that you could activate on yourself that would change your time to kill here. Um, but the main thing to know is that just like straight up by itself vanilla here, you are able to have a, a much more forgiving three burst against uh, some of those mid to high resilience levels. Um, and I don't, I don't think at, at 10 that it ever changes anything. 10 is, 10 is just a tough, it's a tough one to get to. Um, I take that back, I guess. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it does. It does make it a little, you can, you can hit a lot of body shots actually, if you're willing to, to accept a, a slower time to kill. You know, yeah. if you if, ever go into you, that you get, fourth burst, yeah, you can, you could basically hit all body shots yeah. and, you know, and that's not necessarily true. Um, that's, that's true for, for all resiliences, um, with gut shot it is not true, not necessarily true. Otherwise, um, gets, uh, gets a little tough, gets a little tough if you, if you have to go to that fourth shot. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, speaking of, uh, uh, the, the, so the actual numbers you get, uh, this is, this is one of the, one of speaking of Eureka moments. Uh, this is one of the ones that I had around re re reverse engineering crucible numbers. This was one of the weirdest ones. So the body shot for a normal adaptive pulse shows up as 20 in crucible, but it's actually 19, basically straight. It's not 19 point anything. If anything, it's like 19.001. Um, and yeah, that was really weird to discover because it, at the time that, that I figured this out, you know, Nobody else seemed to know this. You, your your spreadsheet had it as 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 uh, as twenty, and um, I figured this out basically through once we just once uh, the the enclave enclave became uh, available. I realized that the the main equation that kind of connects all the different power levels for for the different activities. So when you you know when you click a different thing, it says recommended power level fifteen hundred or recommended power level fifteen eighty. There's mm -hmm. an equation yeah. that that connects them, and it turns out in Enclave, whatever the power level of your weapon plus your uh, uh, plus your artifact uses that as the multiplier for the PvP damage, and that's 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 how you can sort of. Um, so if you have a, a thirteen seventy weapon, you can basically multi divide what you get. Um, what you shoot on an enclave puck by 40 and that will give you your uh, pvp damage so that's how you can see you can get around that rounding because bungie rounds every number all the way up uh even if it's uh in this case 19.0001 or even less or it might according to mercules uh on the, when when you did that pv uh uh when you did that q a uh he said that um the forty damage, the one eighty hand cannons. Mm -hmm. yeah. It what it wasn't. I I I I specifically asked, you know, is it forty point zero zero one? Is it zero 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 one? He said, according to him, it's it's literally just forty, and it gets rounded up to forty one. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those. That's one of those weird like. There's a a, a floating decimal point somewhere, that's yeah that's throwing things off. Um, But yeah. it makes, so, makes it very hard when you're looking at numbers in the game. To, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, in this, in this case, the, the, the 19 body shot moves to 
so you can see it you know the the displayed one goes from 20 to 21 but that doesn't square with it being a 10 percent buff if it was actually 20 then the gut shot body shot would show up as 22 but it's actually yeah 20.9 and that has you know pretty significant consequences for both of these kind of resilience at time to kills yeah no, it, it does. It does kind of play out here. So again, uh, for the adaptive pulse rifles, the kind of the main breakpoints that that I'm making note of in terms of uh, time to kill being improved with gut shot would be uh, with uh, with seven shots, the 0.93 second time to kill. Uh, you can do uh, five crit, two body. On up to four resilience without gut shot. Once you have gut shot, you can do a five crit two body up to six resilience, uh, and that is a that is a really noticeable improvement. Like you're getting a much larger percentage of players um, with that time to kill. And then if you have to go to uh, eight shots uh, without gut shot, uh, you could do four crit four body. So just nice, easy, 50% crit accuracy. Um, that will kill up to 8 resilience. But when you add gut shot in, 4 crit, 4 body kills all the way up to 10. And a little bit extra um, on top. So huge, huge difference there. You, you know, Even if it's only saving you uh, 2 frames on the time to kill, you know, between uh, the all the connections going on, uh, two frames may actually be meaningful occasionally. You know, may it may be the difference between a trade and not a trade, uh, and so it's just something to be aware of. Um, this is this is a perk on this particular weapon type that I would definitely try. Um, I will I will say I don't have perfect crit accuracy with most pulse rifles, and while the adaptives can be pretty accurate. Um, I would certainly want to take a well-rolled version of this with gut shot into the crucible and see how it felt for me. Um, and I think certainly for a player, and you know, if if you you know pay attention for a couple of matches and, and you're playing with a, an adaptive pulse, and you're like, you know, I'm I'm really not actually hitting all my crits. Uh, gut shot is going to make you a little more consistent. It's it's what I would call uh, the good version of Headseeker. <laughs> I was I was about to say as a as as a, a card carrying dad who uh, mains dad rifles, uh, I love Headseeker on my uh, on my uh, messenger, and uh, and I feel like th this I, I I I might legitimately try this out. You know, I I think I think the perk was well named because especially for 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 pulses, you do have that if you don't have perfect aim, there is the because it's kicking up, you're like, do I try to aim for the headshots and you know get get kicked off or flinched off because I can't do a perfect game, or do I aim a little bit lower and just let let the let the um, recoil you know give me some free headshots and guarantee my body shots? And right. I feel like this kind of you know lets you more safely just say, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna aim for center mass and you know get get a couple of those headshots and still get a decent time to kill. Yeah, uh, no, I, I think it's, I think it's pretty valuable. Um, there are a lot of scenarios where you might be trying to hit somebody who's moving very quickly, and you're just you're going to get some body shots because you know they're moving uh, at the speed of light across the map, and it's just how it's going to work out. Hard to hit crits when somebody is is zooming. Uh, and there are going to be some situations where maybe somebody is trying to jump over you to throw you off and you are just body shotting them down. Or maybe you jump up into the air uh, to try to catch the last shot on somebody who is fleeing behind cover. Uh, I think I think there are a lot of scenarios where having just a little bit of extra body damage, just a few extra points, may come down to that's the difference between did you leave them absolute, just a sliver of health, and have to watch them get away um because you're taking my my advice uh from a from a recent appearance on another show and focusing on not dying 
which means not chasing people? Um, or, you know, do you get the kill? Uh, and I think that's kind of the big difference here. Uh, so the other thing is uh, it does move the needle on the, the just the body shot time to kill as well here. If you're just straight up hitting body shots, it, it's going to take you from uh, 11 at 1.47 seconds to 10 at 1.4 seconds. Um, again, just saving you two frames off that fourth burst. Not a huge difference maker, but you never know. You never know when... Uh, that that one shot less might be uh, the thing that keeps you alive. So uh, it is on Smite of uh, Smite of Moraine. It's it's got some steep competition in that that slot. I will acknowledge. Uh, we've got Eye of the Storm, which is just a tier one or or an S tier uh, PvP perk. We've got Swashbuckler, which is also phenomenal. Uh, we've got Adrenaline Junkie which is uh, also quite good. Huge damage buff. Firefly, um, which I, I guess I don't know how good Firefly is on primaries in PvE. You know, obviously not a PvP uh, choice here. Vorpal, which is occasionally nice on a primary, very effective for gunning down supers. And uh, One for All, which is, of course, a PvE perk. Um, but needless to say, you know, we're between... Between Eye of the Storm, Swashbuckler, uh, it it has some competition. Uh, I think any of those three perks are going to be pretty good choices on that pulse rifle. Yeah, uh, is this is this the first time we're getting Eye of the Storm on a on a pulse? Uh, I don't know if it's the first time. I I can't say that I specifically have another pulse rifle already in my inventory with it. Um, that is a good question, though, because Eye of the Storm is also a competing option on Yesteryear, the Gambit Pulse Rifle that can roll get shot. And Yesteryear is unfortunately one of those weapons where they expect you to just be farming it a ton, uh, and so it has a billion perks. Uh, so there, there is a lot of competition as well in that slot. Uh, in terms of PvP perks on Yesteryear that are pretty good, um, I'm still a big fan of Golden Tricorn, which gives you a 15% damage buff for 7 seconds uh, after a final blow. Uh, you don't even have to reload, and then if you do get a grenade or melee kill, it makes it a 50% damage buff for 10 seconds. So pretty pretty phenomenal damage perk in Golden Tricorn that we're trying to compete with against a perk that just always makes your damage, your body damage a little better. So it's a tough, it's a tough sell. It's got Eye of the Storm. Rampage is always solid, although I would take Golden Tricorn over Rampage. Uh, Pugilist is uh, is is pretty nice for melee heavy builds, but not necessarily a huge contender here versus a perk that's going to help you secure kills. Um, and then, of course, Multi Kill Clip as well, a uh, decent perk for extra damage in sixes. And it's got the, the complete opposite perk in Focused Fury as well. Uh, not a perk I would go for on a Pulse Rifle. Really hard to hit that many consecutive crits uh, to be able to get that 20% that damage buff. But um, but it is there. So Gutshot, Gutshot, I think, has almost more competition on Yesteryear because it's got some other damage perk options and some other build-specific perk options. Uh, out there, so I, I don't yeah. know. It's it's a tough sell. What what do you think? Yeah, I mean, with yesteryear, especially given that you can't uh, focus the engrams, right? You're 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 sort of taking what you can what you can get. I think I think you're probably right. Golden tricorn, yeah. I think people forget about yeah, just the base kill without you know worrying about getting a. Uh, Getting the grenade or, or powered melee is is a long time to get a good buff, and on this archetype, yeah, fifty percent buff uh, really helps you out. It's it's phenomenal, um, you know. And honestly, like yesteryear is one of those guns where I'm going for two chain perks so I can take it into sixes. Right? I'm just like, hey, heating up golden tricorn. This feels like a match made in heaven. Um, get a kill. Get phenomenal stability, accuracy, recoil direction, and damage. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sign me yeah. up. <laughs> Sign me up to two burst everybody. 
Um, so it's it's a tough sell to take a uh, gut shot on yesteryear. Yeah, and 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 I think I think you called it that. You know, I have the storm on on Smite seems to be its main competition. You know, in that same niche, if you're if you're sort of panic shooting because you're getting shot at, and if your health is low, right? You know, I think I the storm probably you benefit, you know, on your, to get more crits or you benefit slightly from not getting crits. You sort of want to, you probably want the perk that just gives you more crits anyway. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I think it's, it's comes down a little bit to the player and, and maybe to the rest of the role as well. Um, so, you know, Smite's got some pretty decent stats on it. Uh, and I think if you get a really well statted weapon, you could maybe say, "Hey, this is this weapon's going to be pretty accurate." You know, I could, I could maybe go without Eye of the Storm, but I'd really like to be a little more consistent in my time to kill, and I'm not hitting all crits. Then Gutshot makes sense. But if you're if you're somebody who's reliably hitting, you know, their their crits with uh, with these adaptive pulses, and it certainly is doable, um, especially if you spend a lot of time on them. You know, then obviously get shot just doesn't make sense. So um, I I would say if I think I'm going to be in a lot of situations where I'm going to not be hitting crits, I would take gut shot over Eye of the Storm uh, just because I, I generally would, would almost always favor I'm going to at least hit them in the body, right? That's my like baseline. Like I'm, I'm sure I can hit this person in the body with this gun even if my gun is not super accurate. Yeah. Um, and so it kind of comes down to when you take this pulse rifle out into the crucible, what's happening to you? Like what, you know, what are you running into? Um, and then I think you kind of, as an individual player, you have to make that choice. But yeah. smite's where I would use it between the two for sure. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, like I think I think I don't I don't know if your audience is is is, you know, people that are as- aspiring to crucible greatness or or people that are already sweats, but <laughs> I am, I am certainly not uh I don't even I don't think I'm even aspiring to crucible greatness. I'm just I'm just trying to survive. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's it's definitely something I'm going to try out. I think we've got I think we've got a bit of both out there for sure. I think we definitely have a a broad spectrum of PvP players tuning in. So I gut shot is definitely one that I would say, hey, you know, you're somewhere in the middle of the spectrum. Skill based matchmaking has been something that you did not notice. Uh, maybe try gut shot, like see how it feels. See if if you are surviving gunfights more often, securing kills more often. I think you might. Uh, and if you're not, then for sure, just go with Eye of the Storm and don't worry about it, <laughs> you know, but yeah. give it give it a shot. That would be that would be my challenge. Well, let's uh, let's move on here. We've spent a ton of time talking about these pulses. We've still got a bunch of weapon types to to roll through. True. Uh, let's go to the next pulse rifle archetype, uh, aka the BXR, um, but lightweights. Uh, and, and this is that there's actually just the one lightweight that has it. It is the the BXR fifty five Battler from Dares of Eternity, recently reprised. Yeah, it's it's a weird. It's a weird pick on this because the whole point of the the BXR you know frame versus other lightweights is that you get more you get better hip fire which yeah. you gut shot only activates when you ADS. I thought it was strange that they put it on here. You know, I, I really did. Um, that said, I do. Th- there are there are times you know, especially if I'm. Pairing the BXR with like a sidearm or a shotgun or a, a fusion rifle, uh, especially like a lightweight or I'm sorry, a rapid fire fusion rifle, um, where I'll essentially be maining the BXR and using the other weapon like literally as a holdout if somebody pushes too close. And so you can use the BXR, you know, at the for those mid range gunfights, hip firing. Um, but I do end up using it. I'd, I'd say in, in probably every match at least a couple of times. Uh, while ADSing, because um, right. it 
it does have 20 zoom. Like it, it can hit shots at a very long range. That said, I it does not land crits as reliably as I would like it to at those distances. I'm working really hard to sell gut shot here. I'd still have to agree with you. Like it doesn't make a lot of sense on this this specific weapon. It's a confusing perk to have added. That said, you know, if this weapon had rangefinder in that same slot before, so I guess I'd rather have gut shot than rangefinder on this weapon. If those you, are my you can, you can say that about it. Yeah. Those are my choices. I'd rather have gut shot than rangefinder on the BXR. Um, but it is, it is a weird choice. Well, let's, let's talk about some damage numbers for gut shot on the lightweight pulse rifles. Cause who knows, maybe we'll see some other lightweight pulses drop with it in the future. Uh, That's true. so I'll, I'll pass the mic over here. What's it, what's it doing for us? So, yeah. So at base, the gun does 16 body and 26.5 crit, and then gut shot moves it to 17.6 body. Um, so, I mean, technically, uh, th at zero resilience, uh, there, there is, there is technically a, a 0 0.8 second, uh, all crit time to kill, but for the realistic, uh, eight, uh, eight, eight shot at 0 0.8 seconds, um, you can go from killing all resiliences, oh, actually killing, so you can get one body shot, one body shot and seven headshots. Uh, to kill all resilience, and that's that's the same uh, for for both. And then for two body shots and uh, and six headshots, you now move from killing from doing one ninety damage to one ninety four. So that moves it from killing five resilience to killing uh, seven resilience. So moving up to two resilience levels. Yeah, which is yeah. Uh, that's that's getting a lot more people at seven. Yeah, exactly. It it does it does a similar sort of thing as it does on 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 the three ninety, sort of. If you're, it doesn't actually give you an extra body shot. It just makes that body that you know that extra body shot do uh, kill a couple more people. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that's I think that's it's kind of exactly it's kind of exactly it. You know, it's it's also giving you a lot a lot more consistent three burst kills. Um. Yeah. yeah, going out to you know if you ha if you have to take the full three bursts, take those full nine shots, right? It's, um, what uh, five crits, four bodies, one ninety six, um, which would kill up to eight resilience. Um, but with gut shot, uh, five crits, four bodies kills up to ten resilience. Uh, so it's just making it that much easier to really secure the three burst kill 0.93 seconds is um, it, not a bad time to kill in the crucible at longer ranges, or if you are able to be highly mobile and make your opponent miss, which is of course, you know, the whole point of the BXR in the first place is to, to be more mobile than your opponent um, because yeah. it's got that phenomenal hip fire. Um, so this is a question actually that I, uh, uh, that I want to ask people. Uh, so I'm going to ask you. Uh, what mod do you run on the BXR? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess now now that I'm I'm heading towards being able to craft it, I think on the on the on the roll that I had, I didn't have uh, you know perfect recoil direction. And uh, shout out to now being able to see recoil direction in game. Yeah, um, very nice. Uh, you know, I think I still go for my 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 uh, my go to on pulses, which is um, counterbalance. You know, just to get get it uh, get yeah. it to that um, that five um, five ending to get it a bit more vertical. Yeah, hurts hurts my heart to hear that. Um, no. I, I'm a fir I'm a firm uh, counterbalance uh, opponent, except oh. on like extreme, like rapid fire weapons or uh, you know like like a rapid fire fusion rifle specifically is like one of the few weapons where I'll use a counterbalance mod. 
Um, okay. Uh, so uh, pl- please, I mean, uh, please, please tell me where I'm wrong. Uh, what, well, what should I, I be running? I don't know that you're wrong. I don't know that you're wrong. Um, I, you know, it's mods. Mods are one of those things where a lot of times I think it really is like, does it make the gun feel more usable? Like, then sure, then go for it. Um, no. So I, I usually do one of two things, uh, depending on the rest of my build and, and specifically my exotic armor. If I'm running an exotic that boosts my airborne effectiveness, then I'll run Icarus because being able to be reasonably accurate in the air and even just land body shots consistently with the BXR is very nice. Um, and <laughs> not something you can do without Icarus and an exotic right now. So, right. well, uh, I mean, if, yeah, if, if that's your goal, then I think, you know, back to our topic, you you definitely don't want to take a uh, gut shot because right. You're already in the air. You're already losing so much of your accuracy to start from even lower. I think, I think without, you know, really entirely building into it, like your entire build is based around airborne. Like you're literally, um, heat rises, you know, 90% of the match. I right. don't think, I don't, I don't think you take gut shot because it's going to kill your play style. Yeah, no, I, I would, I would firmly agree with you on that. Um, and it, that's where I really, as much as I like, wanted to be able to to find a, a way for this perk to make sense for the BXR. Like, what I actually run most often, because I, I often don't run exotics that increase my airborne effectiveness, is freehand grip, because um, it gives me the two things that I care about the most: accuracy and ready speed. Uh, and so yeah. it lets me swap weapons faster, and it means that my shots are going to hit more consistently. Um, and again, gut shot just <laughs> doesn't work for me. I actually really have been working hard, uh, not not this week with Iron Banner going on, but I've been working really hard to make my blunt executions roll work with uh, with Caliban's hand. Um, I just have to oh. get people while they're close because it doesn't trigger if they're not close. Right. Gotta be, gotta but be it, within but it, but it triggers on, on on the. Uh... Even on just the explosion kill, it's not, not the explosion kill, but just the the, the melee the AOE yeah. explosion. Yeah, yeah. So oh. it's, if you can bait people into a corner and drop a knife on them, it's uh, it's great. It's a little wow. harder to do than I'm making it sound, though. Um, do, do, do you get? I feel I feel like that's the kind of thing that like would feel bad to lose against. Like, do, you, do <laughs> have you gotten any hate mail from it? I, uh, you know. I actually like never get hate mail, no matter how well I'm doing. I never get hate mail, and I, I almost like feel like I'm not a good enough player because of it. I'm like, gosh, I sh- I feel like I should have gotten hate mail that batch. Like, you know, like oh, I was really abusing Jotun. Like, I I should be somebody should be upset, but apparently I just never piss any one person off enough for them to do that. So. But- Maybe, maybe, maybe the, maybe the destiny community is just, it's just better about that. I don't know. You know, I don't know what it is, but yeah, it's, it, I feel it like is. The closest thing with, at least with exotics is, is like, if you stay in the lobby with them and then you notice, you notice them switching to that exotic. Mm. I do get people switching to the monarch on me. That happens. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no hate mail. Uh, it is. It is a fun niche thing to do. But yeah, uh, get shot straight. So in that column, again, it's it's always competing with Eye of the Storm, it seems like. Uh, it's also competing with Kill Clip, which for sixes is a pretty pretty solid choice. Incandescent is just phenomenal. Um, and it's also, there. there's Elemental Capacitor, which is another... A super strong perk uh, in, you know, with certain subclasses. Um, specifically, I, you know, I guess I would say uh, Void and, and Arc. Uh, that's a, a super strong perk to have on this weapon. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, uh, and, uh, and uh, even, even uh, Stasis. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I mean, it kind of, you know, if you're not hip firing, it kind of, Balances out, puts gives it you the benefit in terms of a reduced ADS movement pen- penalty. That's true. Um, it, it does give you that, and 20 points of recoil direction means you don't need a counterbalance pod. 
<laughs> no, my crutch. Um, then you've got room for freehand grip. Come t- come to the dark side. Um, okay, so so that's the BXR. Uh, I think we I think we're we're green. Uh, it it does do some stuff, but it's probably not the right perk for this weapon. No, yeah, I I would I would agree with that. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's move on here. Let's talk about auto rifles. Uh, so it is on the Amit AR2, which is a precision Omelon auto rifle, and I have to say, possibly the nicest feeling auto rifle that's come out in recent memory. Um, I haven't I haven't tried it out. It, uh, I am I am really coming around to uh, the Omelon. Uh, fluid dynamics origin trait uh, on rapid fire weapons as being possibly like really really good like not even possibly it's really good on rapid fire weapons uh we'll we'll talk about uh smgs in a minute here Uh, i'm a huge huge fan of the omelon smg Uh, um but it is yeah out of bounds it's it's omelon too yeah yeah so um, but so the Amit does get that nice uh, big stability and reload buff at the top of the magazine. It it rolls with dynamic sway reduction, which perfectly counteracts the uh, the loss that you have. And then you just reload, <laughs> and you just always have perfect accuracy. It's it's a pretty phenomenal. You can even go further. Uh, Gut shot is competing with tap the trigger, which is another really brutal uh, comparison to have to make it that said for pvp doesn't have that much else that it's really competing with here you know pugilist and adrenaline junkie are kind of really build specific choices i would even say adrenaline junkie probably isn't strong enough to be worth it in pvp for most people uh incandescent is another great perk but you know in, in terms of winning gunfights I don't know that it competes with gut shot. Uh, it certainly doesn't compete with tap the trigger. Yeah, you know, adaptive yeah, munitions obviously makes no sense in the crucible, and uh, and one for all is uh, a just PVE only. Great in PVE, but but obviously not something that you can really consistently use here. So gut shot has pretty decent odds of of being useful here if it does something meaningful. Mossy. Does it do something meaningful for this uh, auto rifle? Let's see. Uh, so precision auto rifles at base do uh, 20 body, 30 crit, a nice sort of even number. And uh, this takes it uh, cleanly up to 22 body damage. Uh, so for the optimal time to kill, 0.8 seconds uh, at seven shots. Um, normally, um, you can do up to if you hit two body shots and uh, and five crits you can normally do 190 damage which uh will kill five resilience uh with gut shot that takes you up to 194 damage which will kill two resilience so same theme going on uh as the previous two guns uh you know with more rapid fire archetypes uh getting two more resilience um on that not ideal you know, scenario it, inside of your optimal time to kill. Yeah. Uh, and then if for some reason you're seeing somebody that has one resilience that has like, <laughs> you, I mean, you really have to build into that specifically to get to one resilience. It's you a can choice. Even it's hit, a choice. <laughs> you can hit three body shots uh, and five crits for your optimal time to kill. And then if you if you hit if you hit one more shot one more body shot one more shot at uh, 0.93, eight bullets, um, you go from killing also one one ninety damage uh, with with five body shots and and three crits to uh, to two hundred to killing all 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 resiliences instead of five resilience. That's uh, uh, that 0.93. That's pretty. That's significant. a big jump. Yeah, that's a huge jump right there. And five crits, or I'm sorry, three crits, five bodies is like possibly the easiest uh, target you could have on an auto rifle. Um, you just, you know, aim for center mass and just like let your let your bullets drift up and you'll get there. Yeah. Um, 
0.93 is a decent time to kill. So, yeah, very, very attractive jump right there. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, on this on this archetype, yeah, I, I was like, it might not be my going into this. I was like, it's probably not going to be my favorite for any of these rapid fire. But when you've when you're mixing the, the stability boost and from the uh, origin trait plus dynamic story reduction, giving you that that extra accuracy, sort of making up for the uh, uh, the loss of gut shot. I could I could I could kind of see it. Yeah, I I think there's I think there's something there, um, and this this is also uh, one of those rare auto rifles where you can actually really kind of lean hard into the range if you get that that perfect roll or if you craft it with the perks that you want and level it up, which is what I'm doing. Um, because you know if you've got dynamic sway reduction and Omelon fluid dynamics. Firing from the top of the magazine, your shots are always going to be super, super accurate. Um, like you said, so you're really, you know, the need for that aim assist to be really high just isn't there. Uh, and Omelon fluid dynamics and dynamic sway reduction are doing uh, just huge favors for your stability. Your stability is effectively 20 points higher for, you know, for that whole first burst um, because dynamic sway reduction kicks in as Omelon starts to starts to fade out uh, which puts your stability you know with a decent a, a decent roll uh say you you get a you've got ricochet rounds on there um you're looking at like 75 stability which is all an auto rifle really needs and then you can put everything else into boosting the range up uh and on a precision uh you know they, they're already hitting out at pretty decent ranges for auto rifles not fantastic they have a tough time against pulse rifles and hand cannons and scout rifles and bows, but you know, at the very least, you're a little bit closer, and it's not a high impact, uh, so it's a lot smoother to fire. Uh, this is, I think, one of the few auto rifles that I feel comfortable using, even against decent players in the Crucible. I will. Under no circumstances, make the argument that it is at this point in time a, a meta PvP weapon or a competitive PvP weapon, uh, because it isn't. Um, you know, having to to hit that kind of continuous stream of fire makes it a lot tougher to peak shoot, a lot tougher to uh, catch that burst damage. Right, you you just you can't do it, um, and so that's a big downside. Uh, that said, for newer players, um, for players who maybe aren't so hardcore, aren't so great at Crucible, if you have not crafted yourself an Amit AR2, like you got it, you got to do it. <laughs> do it, do it with the with the perks I mentioned there. Do it with with ricochet rounds and dynamic sway reduction, uh, and then throw a bunch of range onto it. Throw hammer forged and uh, and level it up and, and get that range masterwork plus ten like. Just, uh, just trust me. Like it's, it's gonna feel really nice, and then you can have whatever perk you want in that last column. Yeah. Oh, and this, I mean, you know, we're reaping the benefits of, uh, of crafting. You know, I feel like you're, you know, I think you're right. This does sort of require a kind of specific, um, since you get all that stability, you know, built all the way into range. You know, you don't have to wait until you get a high range roll with gutshot and a high range roll with tap the trigger. Just, you know, craft one. Or craft two, yeah. um, and and especially now that the, they've improved the uh, the progression, uh, you only need to hit level seven uh, or level seven to unlock tap the trigger, level eight to unlock gut shot straight, and uh, dynamic sway reduction is unlocked right off the bat. So like you can even have two uh, leveled up pretty quick um, to just try them both out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um... Yeah, that's. I think that's. I think that's about about all we can say about it. Uh, this gut shot also helps your body shot time to kill in the crucible. Takes it from, uh, let's see. I think it's, or maybe it doesn't. Just makes it really, really consistent uh, with with fewer shots. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So yeah. So it's uh, it's one point two seconds body shot, um, with ten body shots either way um but it is 
super consistent with nine shots, like really, really hard not to kill. So with with nine shots, you can do nine bodies. That's 198 up to nine resilience. You're going to body shot them faster. 1.07 seconds. Uh, yeah. So it's just just the 10 resilience freaks who are going to survive pretty pretty appealing pretty appealing choice i think so yeah well yeah and and yeah like for for these bullets i think i think we'll we'll see it even more in the in the uh, smg next but yeah as as you get firing faster and faster the the close to body shot you know time to kill starts starts showing you know uh more and more it's it's value like yeah. you for for two bullets you get Let's see. Yeah, you need you need at nine bullets. You can't kill uh, with nine bullet. But oh, I'm getting lost here. With nine bullets, I think it, it goes up to one ninety eight, right? I said that. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, one ninety eight. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah so but without without gut shot, you need uh, you need at least two crits. Yeah. 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 Without yeah, I guess I didn't I didn't do the co- the kind of the comparison there. So yeah, nine, nine shots. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's two crits, seven bodies, up to ten resilience. Uh, so it's not gonna not gonna get the job done as effectively there. But but yeah, gosh, gut shot really makes it super super consistent if you're not hitting crits. Like very very solid. Well, let's let's talk about the SMGs because um, this is this is one where I. I'm really curious to see how it plays out. Um, out of bounds has become my favorite weapon in the Crucible this season. Uh, it is just so so ridiculously easy to use, and I'm just really sad that I can't craft it. Um, but luckily, it's dropping like candy, and I think as I get my resets in, um, I will hopefully end up with something that I that I can be happy with for the long term. Um, yeah. well, so out of bounds is, uh, it's an Omelon, uh, lightweight frame submachine gun fires 900 rounds per minute. Uh, notably has a super nice recoil direction and 14 wow, zoom yeah. as it should. So 95, 95 recoil direction base. That's wild. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. It's, it's definitely, definitely pretty nice. Um, well, let's let's take a look because gut shot. I think again because this is another weapon that has just a massive perk pool. Gut shot comes up against heavy competition on out of balance, and I think it's going to need to make a really strong case for itself to be worth choosing. Um, other PvP options in that that fourth column that are worth looking at on out of bounds. Uh, would include kill clip uh surrounded actually has a case to be made for it um unfortunately you can't get enhanced surrounded which would really be worth it so regular surrounded not quite as good in the crucible as the enhanced version uh golden tricorn super solid as well uh swashbuckler that's been a close range weapon a lot easier to use uh, that perk uh, it does have adrenaline junkie again. Kind of would rate that a little lower. Tap the trigger on this weapon is phenomenal. Makes it just an absolute laser beam. Uh, Range finder gives it a nice uh, increase to aim assist, fall off distance uh, to your zoom, so it's pushing out your damage fall off. Just super strong choice as well. Um, and then it's also got harmony. In this column, uh, so get a kill with your shotgun or fusion rifle, swap to out of bounds, and suddenly it's got a twenty percent damage buff, an extra fifteen points of handling for for seven seconds. You'd have three seconds to make that swap too, so it's not even a hurried maneuver. Um, just a super strong option. Uh, so those are kind of the 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 highlights from that fourth column. It it's a it's a good column. There's a lot of good perks. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 really stacked. It's it's super super stacked. Um, like the only way I can really 
choose to go with gut shot here is I think if I if I've really just got the rest of the weapon is perfect. Um, and then maybe I want to keep it. You know, maybe moving target might be good enough. I am curious to try that combo, but I feel like I'd rather have dynamic sway reduction or threat detector or hip fire, um, perpetual motion, bunch of bunch of super solid perks uh, that you could pair to kind of make it worthwhile giving up <laughs> some of the phenomenal options that you have. But I just don't know. I this is going to be a hard sell. Yeah. Um, All right. Su super hard sell. Well, let's let's go to the to the damage tables here. Yeah. So the 10% buff gives it, uh, moves it from 11 body to 12.1 and the, uh, and the crit damage is 18.2 regardless. So looking at just the straight up optimal time to kill of 0.67 seconds, uh, let's see, does it change anything? It doesn't change, um, you can get one body shot for both that still kills at um so all crits at 0.67 uh kills 10 resilience if yep. you get one body shot uh it kills at um let's see seven resilience regardless oh no wait no it moves it up one resilience yeah yeah you do go so it, it normally From six to seven yeah normally 10 crits one body would kill up to six resilience but it does go up to seven and then so. with uh Two with two body shots, it goes up from uh, killing at zero resilience to a, a, an almost functional killing at uh, three resilience. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it. I I know people who run three resilience intentionally in the crucible, so it's uh, you you can catch a few folks that way. It's not going to be not going to be a majority of the population these days, I think, but there'll be some. Um, well, looking a little bit more like the, you know, this is a submachine gun when you're playing with it, things can get pretty frantic. You're not hitting all crits consistently unless, unless you're, I don't know, just ridiculously good at this game, I guess, but I'm not hitting all crits consistently. I can say that for sure. Uh, so let's, let's move down a little and see if we've got some, some easier to hit breaks a little, a little closer to that 50, 50 point. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, yeah, I think in every, in every, for every bullet further, I think it gives you at least one extra body shot now will, will kill 10 resilience. So at, at, uh, 0.73 seconds, uh, 12 bullets now, um, instead of two body shots killing 10 resilience, you go to three body shots killing 10 resilience. And then, you know, if, uh, moving the Helps. time to kill up. Yeah. 2.8 at 13 bullets you go from uh five body eight crit to now six body seven crit will uh will go down 10 resilience well that and then that feels that feels downright doable right there um and 0.8 seconds is is super competitive um yeah that's true so especially you know if you're uh if you're keeping enough distance to prevent yourself from getting shotgunned um, that's that's definitely a pretty pretty fair time to kill. Uh, you'll have to watch out for the fusioneers for sure at those distances. Um, obviously, you want to land your crits, especially if you see a fusion rifle. Like, gosh, I hope you land your crits because that's the only thing that's going to keep you alive. But that does feel super doable. So it's yeah, thirteen shots, point eight seconds was. Um, seven crit, five body. Did I do that math right? Eight crit, five body. Um, yes. Goes to uh, seven crit, six body. That is, it's just that touch easier. And then it's still killing a lot of guardians. Um, even if you have an extra body, if it's, you know, six crit, seven body. Uh, if I'm reading this right, it does still kill up to six resilience, yeah? Uh yeah, one ninety three damage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, six crit seven body. Yeah, so yeah, you're moving past the the fifty percent uh, crit ratio. Still, yeah, kills decent in a in a competitive time to kill. Yeah. Yeah, still still pretty good there. 
Um, and that's that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the theme all the way down here. Um, is it's just making it a little bit easier. Um, the the more shots you need to get the kill, uh, kind of the the easier it is to get that kill with a lot of body shots. Yeah. Well, and uh, and it and it moves the the all body time to kill, uh, at least for ten resilience up uh, by an entire uh, two bullets. It goes from uh, yeah yeah point uh, one point two seconds uh, down to one point oh seven seconds. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that that is actually pretty pretty massive. I would say um, being able to uh, actually have like a body shot time to kill. That is not terrible. You know, 1.07 seconds is that that's an amount of time that gunfights do take place in. You know, somebody misses some shots like you could absolutely just body somebody down um, by yeah. not by not missing. Just hitting that center mass, right? <laughs> Following the instructions in the perk, um, just shooting straight for the gut uh, absolutely will happen. If you catch any crits in there, it's only going to speed you up. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think. So. I mean, yeah. This, this. It's sort of uh, like I love this perk because it, it, it's got so many different facets to it. And I think, yeah, this is one that it, you know it it severely limits your 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 downside. Yeah, and even you know, just getting somebody close to that can be enough, especially if you're running a build that's doing anything to help your optimal time to kill. Um, you know, in, anyone out there running radiant or uh, or any weekend effects. Um, is going to, I think, benefit pretty strongly from just being able to throw some body shots on somebody and then bug out. Uh, Arc Buddy Warlocks uh, definitely yeah. can take advantage of this. Uh, one of my favorite tricks is kind of uh, treating the Arc Buddy like uh, like some people treat Austria Striga. You fire the shots, and then you just duck behind cover and wait for them to die. Um, I did actually try... Kind of as, as an aside, as an experiment, I tried pairing Austria Strigo with Arc Buddy. Because I was like, well, I got travel time on the Arc Buddy. Maybe the maybe these two things will work together. Uh, <laughs> and I gotta say, it's a tough, it's a tough weapon to use in the crucible. I know there wow. there are some devotees, but travel time is is brutal for a primary weapon in the crucible. Yeah, well, they, yeah, that goes back to like time to payload. Like the flinch is amazing, but you're literally increasing your time to kill. Yeah, for uh, for doing that. Yeah, and with Austro, it's like those projectiles are not fast. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a very significant uh, amount of time. So didn't work out as well as I hoped, but I did go back to out of bounds. Um, I don't have a gut shot roll on this, but I I'm looking forward to seeing if it does play out well in terms of making those times to kill more consistent because that's that's a setup where I'm not as worried you know I don't need range finder because I don't have to hit those super long ranges if I've got a DSR then I don't need to tap the trigger my shots are already going to be perfectly accurate uh, so then gut shot suddenly becomes a viable option for just you know trying to make sure I'm winning every single 1v1 uh, that you know, that's a loadout that I'm looking at. Like, hey, I could take this into threes and be successful with it. Um, yeah, it's maybe not as good for chaining, uh, where I could take something like golden tricorn if I want to chain kills and probably be a lot more effective. Um, yeah, for sure. Well, and, and you touched on you know, if if you're doing a build that has that leans into radiant or or you know, any kind of buffs or debuffs. Yeah. Like, I wish we had time to go through every single combination of these, because I'm sure there, there are some. I think Gutshot probably has some uh, decent use there, because you're are, like you're already going to be hitting such a ridiculous time to kill that's going to be faster than anything you, that you're encountering. And so cutting that down to more body shots and letting you sort of focus on the setup more and not having to worry about Okay, now I've hit the perfect situation. Now I need to hit all my crits to make that a lot more relaxed. You know, there there might be use there. Yeah. No, I I actually I think 
you know, pairing it specifically with Radiant because it's it's a, a damage buff that's relatively easy to activate in the Crucible. Um, at least you can activate it generally in a controlled manner. I, hunters obviously have the advantage there, um, but you know, but it is it is doable for any given class. Uh, adding, you know, pairing that up with Gutshot just gives you like. Like the most, and I, I, I don't know exactly how you phrased it there, the most relaxed, optimal time to kill options possible. Like you're just, you can just be super chill. Like, ah, I got a headshot. That'll take, that'll take care of it. Um, yeah. You know, it's it becomes very, very calm. And uh, SMGs are so, uh, it's, you know, they're so good right now. And this, this SMG in particular, like I've had a couple of people be like, ah, I don't think it's that good. I'm like, I think you need to try it. Um, you know, someone's like, how does it fare against, you know, the Iclos? And I'm like, well, it, it has a little bit less range and like twice as much stability. So, you know, uh, your mileage may vary and better yeah. aim assist. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a fan, uh, suffice to say, I don't know that Gutshot is the best perk here. If you're a good player, you may not want to go that route. That said, it it is appealing if you want to be if you want to be chill, if you want to be relaxed, if you want to just know that you're going to secure the kill. Hmm. But I mean, uh, you know, on on the other hand, if you want to be you 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 know, with the for for my money, I think the optimal perk is Ragefinder. You also get more relaxed at range. Like you get, yeah. you know, you don't get the damage fall off, so you're doing more damage uh, on your bodies. Uh, you know, at, at a distance, if you're not right, you know, in their in their face. Yeah, I w- I would agree for sure. For dueling purposes, uh, I I I think Rangefinder is what I want in that column. Right? You know, Rangefinder DSR. And the rest of the gun honestly doesn't have to be perfect at that point because it's it's going to be fine. Um, really, really going to be just be very easy to land those crits and be consistent that way. So I, I would agree with you. Um, but that does kind of assume a, a certain baseline level of uh, comfort and competence with an SMG. Um, the you know that said this this is an SMG I would recommend to somebody who's not liked SMGs in the past. Um, because I I have not played SMGs before this season. I I've occasionally I take I was taking them out because I know I I've, I know that they have been good. I've seen a lot of people using them effectively. I just didn't like the way they felt. But this one this one I can't put down. It's got that that special Omelon secret sauce. Um, so regardless of what you go with, would recommend. Uh, and I, I think Gutshot is viable here with the right build. All right. Wow. Uh, this is going to be a long episode. Let's uh, let's roll through some sidearms. All right. So uh, the 260, that's the... Uh, Bo- is that Bodicea? Bodica? It is, yes. Yep, that's the precision uh, sidearm archetype. So not an archetype that... Well, sidearms have a have a tough game keeping up with other short range weapons, but yeah, you uh, you don't see a lot of precision sidearms in the Crucible right now. So I'm curious to see if this will convince me to take the Bodic out. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, in terms of damage, it goes from forty body, fifty seven, uh, fifty six crit to uh, forty four body. Uh, actually, I mean, at, at base, this one is, is one of the more impactful ones, um, yeah. moving, um, from your optimal time to kill 0. 0.7, uh, seconds, uh, so two body, two crit, uh, moving from 193 damage, which, uh, only kills six resilience to killing 10 resilience. That makes it much more consistent, you know, that's 50, 50. That's super consistent. That's uh, that's what I needed to hear. <laughs> um, so the and 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 it rolls uh it rolls rangefinder 
No, 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 it doesn't. I could have sworn. Oh no, maybe I was thinking hip fire grip. It does have hip fire grip. Uh, it also has moving target that you could pair with um, with gut shot. If you if you really hate aim assist, if you feel like aim assist just ruins your life, you could you could pair <laughs> slick draw with gut shot to get rid of your aim assist. Um, so that is <laughs> that is an yeah. option that's available to you. Um, no, I think what I would personally probably go with is threat detector. Um, so threat detector activates when you're within 15 meters of one enemy in the crucible, and it gives you uh, at that point 15 points of stability, 15 points of reload, and a 0.75 handling animation modifier. Um, 15 points of stability is a lot, and if you happen to have two or more enemies within 15 meters of you, it gives you 40 points of stability, um, which which is a whole lot, you know. Uh, so that that is a for me probably a go to you, you. You're probably within 15 meters of an enemy if you're using a sidearm at any given point in time. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, and, and and you know it's nice for the uh, for the um, information aspect. It's it nice is. to have a, a thing on the side of your screen to say, should I be engaging with my sidearm at all? <laughs> <laughs> to, to a little go button to say, yep, you can you can shoot them and you'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it, it is definitely helpful to see that kind of pop up again, yeah, and, and and like you're right, like be be confirmed that like yes, this person is within range, um, and just hope it's not somebody behind you. Um, that said, you know, I'd, I'd say either threat detector or moving target for me are going to be the choices, um, that I would go with. This is a longer range sidearm. It's going to encourage you to to play kind of at the outer range of a outer edge of effective distances for sidearms. Uh, that are not drang, um, and uh, I, I like gut shot on this one a lot. That's a huge, huge effect on optimal time to kill. Yeah, yeah. This is the one I still haven't gotten one, but I've been literally every single one of my um, umbral engrams has been going to uh, the Haka focus and at the star chart to try and get one. Yeah, that's that's really really massive, and it's kinetic. Uh, it's always nice to have a good kinetic sidearm because it's really hard to choose an energy sidearm that is not Drang because Drang has two points of extra zoom over yeah. and above all other sidearms until Bungie chooses to nerf it at some unknown point, which I just I I'm just dreading because Drang is so nice. But uh, at least we'll have the the Bodica with gut shot. Uh, okay, well, now I'm curious to see what does this do for adaptive sidearms? Allied Demand is back, and I have I have secretly been hoping for the return of Allied Demand actually like all year because I love I love being able to run a, a good kinetic sidearm. I love the adaptive archetype. Allied Demand now has to compete with Bodica though up in, up in the precision, so I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Might might be a might be a hard fight. Yeah, it it uh, well, I mean, yeah, I don't I don't think it benefits as much in the uh, in the optimal. So in terms of the numbers, uh, it goes from this is another I think another weird one. I think it shows up as thirty seven in the in uh, in the crucible numbers, but it is actually thirty six body uh, and uh, fifty point four crit, moving to thirty nine point six body. Uh, so with its optimal zero point six second time to kill four bullets. Um, you can hit one at base. If you get, um, four, four crits, it will kill 10 resilience. One body shot, it will kill at base only, uh, two resilience. And with gut shot, it will, that will move up to five resilience. So, you know, three more resilience points, you know, five is still a realistic, um, thing to, to aim for. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's not that's not terrible. Um, not it's, nothing. It's definitely not as big of a benefit as what we saw with the precisions for sure. Yeah. Um, I do I do notice some good things though for the body shot time to kill. Uh, is it? Yeah. Wow. F five? With with five bodies, 
uh, 0.8 seconds, it will kill up to nine resilience. Yeah, yeah, that's so that's almost everybody. Um, that's that's really nice. All right, so previously with five bodies, you were not killing anybody. Um, so that's a huge damage jump. Um, it had you needed six six bodies six bodies on the regular gun without gut shot um, will take down anybody. Uh, lots of lots of damage there. That's two hundred sixteen damage, but yeah, one ninety eight from five bodies with gut shot, and that's 0.8 seconds. That's a really respectable time to kill for any weapon, like we've been talking about. Um, certainly enough time to gun down somebody who's charging you. And <laughs> you almost never need to hit a crit uh, unless yeah. they're unless they're a juggernaut titan, uh, in which case you've got other problems. But um, that is pretty solid. Yeah. And uh, I mean, in terms of competition, I don't think we talked about this much with the Bodoka. I don't think Bodoka has really any competition. It, Swashbuckler uh, was the only other viable crucible choice for the Bodoka in that column. And I, I feel like Gutshot is just with that optimal time to kill shift, it's head and shoulders the best choice. Yeah, and um, for for allied demand, I think Iron Reach until they change how sidearms work. Like range does nothing for sidearms. Right, but stability is super super nice. <laughs> so yeah. I did try an Iron Reach allied demand, and it was awful. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's there's Eye of the Storm. But uh, yeah, I don't know if you're if you're already in sidearm ranges. I don't know that you need that much more that much more accuracy, especially with the yeah the the point zero eight uh, body that you can get with with gut shot. Yeah, that's that's that is a really nice benefit, um, and you've got range finder in the third column, which gives you a decent because it's a zoom buff. It actually does you know do something meaningful for being able to land those shots. It uh, pushes out your aim assist fall off, um, which is helpful since you are going to have less of it if you're running gut shot. Um, and so that that would certainly be a pairing that's pretty appealing to me, being able to consistently hit those those five body kills. Um, I mean, that's nice. You know, you got, we, we've been talking about how, you know, you kind of, you, you have a lot of crazy movement going on in the Crucible right now, a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff happening, and so it's it's helpful to just be able to consistently gun somebody down without even having to be accurate. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, it does have Eye of the Storm in that fourth column, though, which is always a always a tough perk to go up against, uh, especially on a close range weapon where you can you can rely on the fact that you're going to be taking damage. Um, and Allied Demand is a Iron Banner weapon now, so it does have the Skulking Wolf origin trait, um, which, while at low health, guarding final blows with this weapon grant enhanced radar and remove you from opposing radar. Um, and that, you know, sort of, I, I always love it when perks sync up, so it makes Eye of the Storm even more appealing, uh, mm -hmm. since they're triggering on the same, the same thing happening. Uh, that said, I'm also a fan of winning gunfights. <laughs> And Gutshot just just does that a little better because it does damage. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's I, I, it's another one where I feel like you got to try both, and then you got to try the Bodica and see see which of those three options is the best. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's uh it's tough because yeah with the uh, with the Bodica you you got the the I mean the ideal two crit two body zero point seven seconds. But 0.8 seconds is not much. Uh, it's not that much longer, and that's all body with 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 gut shot. Yeah, yeah. It's just for anybody except for ten resilience. And I, I mean, I, I mean, I think you know the keyword, especially for uh, if we're, if we're if we're jumping next into the uh, the Zowie, I think ten resilience is going to be a big keyword. Um, uh, when if. This is the only one that I that I needed to double check the uh, the buffs for because it, it it does end up being significant. Well, let's uh, let's let's do it, and then we do have to just make a 
like an honorable mention to uh, Whistler's Whim, which can also get this perk, but is a lightweight bow. <laughs> um, so we'll, <laughs> that, that's that's almost all I really need to say about it right there. But um, but I yeah, mean, so it, I mean, two two body. That's it, that's that's all it, that's all it does. Like it's 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 the it's the two body shot bow. If that's what you want to do, yeah, that's that's what it can do. Uh, is it, it? Does it even take you to to body? I think it. I think it only takes the body damage to like ninety five. Uh, bow, bows and hand cannons are both uh twenty percent. Oh, it's twenty percent. That's right. Ah, math, my old nemesis. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, it, so it is the two body bow. If you if you want to go that route, um, well, I guess I've I've gone and I've gone and segued into it. So let's just do it. So yeah, gut shot does make it a two body bow. It does penalize your aim assist though, and this is a lightweight bow. So I don't know. That's a hard sell you're not, for me. You're not you're not hitting anything but body shots with this. Yeah. So you <laughs> good thing good thing it will buff the body shots because yeah. you're not hitting anything else. You really have to lean in, uh, super hard into like making your draw time as minimal as possible if that's the route you're going to go, right? Like, you know, draw time masterwork and um, polymer string, um, which I believe makes it another minus 40. Uh, gosh, if you can make cornered work somehow, I don't, I feel like that's just a death <laughs> sentence at that point. But at the same time, uh, no, rapid hit uh, also won't go off because you're going to have no aim assist. So I don't know. That's about all you can do. Make it a 500 millisecond drop time, draw time. And you can two body in, been, in one second flat. Except you really also nice have to, to knock see. an arrow, so you can't. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I think it would have been nice to see. Uh, I wouldn't mind playing with like impulse amplifier if it was in the third column to just like kind of like yeah. the quick... Quick, uh, quick, getting those body shots off. I mean, it'd be impossible to like theory craft because the the damage change as you hit imperfect draws like is so hard to predict. Yeah, but uh, it might be something. Yeah, and no, I, you know, I'd probably go with like moving target or rangefinder, um, just to try to actually land those shots with full damage. Um, I don't know. I think that's. I think that's all you can do. Uh, I suppose you could bet on uh, you could bet on Vice Stinger to uh, instantly reload the weapon for you, which it will occasionally. Or no, bows it just it's faster draw speed. Never mind. I'm sure there's some there's some implications here for blinting. Yeah, but uh, but I'm I am not the person to 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 talk about that. Well, they've they've also uh, talked about the fact they're going to be nerfing the bow blinting playstyle because primaries blinting is not not really something that they want to be a dominant choice. Yeah. So I'm I'm of course just bow blinting like crazy while I can, but uh, yeah, no, I mean you you can do it with a lightweight. You could you could for sure do it with a lightweight, and Whistler's whim is probably the one to do it with because it'll at least clear a hundred damage. All right. Well, yep. that's that's about all we can say about that. Let's talk about Zauli's Bane and the 140 hand cannons. Yeah. So this is our this is the last one, um, and uh, thankfully they do a lot of damage. So it's it's pretty easy to see. There's not a whole lot of different breakpoints uh, to look at here. Um, so 140 hand cannons do. Uh, forty six point five damage to the body normally, and uh, sixty nine point seven five. Uh, it's a, it's a very clean one point five. Uh, crit ratio. Um, and with gut shot, that moves up to um, fifty five point eight. And this is one of the, another one that like the the it's not going to actually change anything, but it it does increase the the crit from sixty nine point seven five to sixty nine point nine. <laughs> just random bit of random bit of trivia no never know um, when, when somebody somebody's healing that uh, you know that might be just enough and uh and the big thing is that it um it will move you into uh two crit one body uh at base uh up until what resilience is that That's that is seven seven yeah seven 
um, instead of uh, one. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big jump. Um, I feel like this is going to be something to watch out for. Like, I feel like this could easily, if it becomes somewhat meta, you, you can, you, we can have people that will, you know, jump up the resilience to, uh, to avoid that. Uh, the big one that I want to call out, um, with Radiant, uh, this can do two, uh, yeah, two body, one head, uh, is 199.5 so it just barely misses uh 10 resilience thankfully if you hit 10 resilience if you're 10 resilience you cannot be two hit two body one head with uh a radiant gut shot zowley wow um yeah that's that's pretty good uh so zowley's bane has some some pretty it's pretty decent perks on it um for dueling purposes you know it's got st stuff like explosive payload uh, it does have opening shot if that's something that you're into for cleanups um or actually so those are competing with gut shot straight i should say so this is this is the one weapon where gut shot is in the third column mm -hmm. which is which is a little funky um because it means that for once it's not competing with eye of the storm um <laughs> which which is a nice change of pace um it is competing with explosive payload and opening shot uh, and hip fire grip, but honestly, that's that's a pretty f decent uh, field for it to to go into and come out looking like a, a viable choice that you could make. You know, in in the fourth column, uh, in terms of PvP perks, uh, focused fury is certainly uh, an option for some folks who who like to stack things up like that, who like to to play that. Uh, play that uh, crit farming play style, but don't want to use Hawkmoon uh, for some reason. Um, so Focus Fury is an option there. Uh, but Eye of the Storm is really the, the big PvP go-to in that fourth column. There's no other choice that really comes close to it in terms of just consistently hoping you win gunfights. Incandescent is always fun. Um, but that's that's really it. That's, that's really the whole... The whole kit and caboodle. Uh, it's yeah. just really just eye of the storm in the fourth column. So, you could, you could, yeah, you could, hit, you could mix focus fury and gut shot for like some sort of perverted reverse range finder, <laughs> so, re reverse, uh, reverse head seeker. Yes, you uh, get all your crits and then unlock just a giant body shot damage. <laughs> that would be some, some pretty mad body shot damage right there. Uh, I, I, that probably puts you in the vicinity of, of being able to three body somebody. Maybe not quite. Actually, yeah, I, I, ju I, ju I just looked at it. Yeah, it's 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 three body uh, kills ten <laughs> resilience with with focus fury, <laughs> proc and gut shot. Well, there there it is, folks. That's that's the meme build. <laughs> um, so you know, just uh, <laughs> just land five headshots, and then you can three body somebody one time <laughs> i mean it's you know it's doable i guess if you ran like appended mag you could land six headshots and then you could three body two people um <laughs> so there it is that's uh that's that's a way that's a way to take to guarantee four kills in one mag with Lee's bane um no, I, I think the value for gut shot there really is just in making your kills, uh, g giving you faster kills against people with lower resiliences, and then making your body shot kills or kills against people with overshields and healing and other nonsense super consistent, right? Because it's going to do, even with four bodies, it's going to do 223 damage. So if you've got any bodies in there, uh, you know, two crit, two body with gut shot active is 251 damage. That's that's gonna take down uh, pretty much anybody. Yeah. Um, this also yeah. puts it over the thresh the threshold to break a juggernaut shield in one shot, which is very nice. Um, because ju those yeah. juggernaut shields are uh, fifty health. Uh, void over shields are forty five health, so it's gonna crack those in one shot. Um, 
I, I guess the, the regular body damage would also do that. This just kind of gives you a head start into getting the kill. Um, I think so. I think Juggernaut is one of those shields that will tank all the damage. So even even if you do over damage, it, you, yep. you just get rid of the, the over shield. Correct. Yeah, with Juggernaut, it, it does uh, reduce to zero any extra damage that it does take. So it, but but you can kill it with one body shot um, with gut shot act with gut shot straight. Uh, so that is actually worth noting because you know there are definitely Juggernaut Titans running around these days. Yeah. Um, uh, another nice thing with the Zowie. Yeah. Again, it's it's in the third column, so you sort of unlock other options, and it's craftable, so you have access to. The enhanced version, which you know, I don't, I don't know if anybody's done testing again, but it probably severely limits the the downside of the um, aim assist nerf. Yeah, you know, the, the verbiage goes from decreases target acquisition to de- decreases target acquisition slightly. Yeah, so that's an encouraging word. Makes me feel like it's maybe you know half as bad as the the yeah. base version, uh, which. Honestly, makes it a lot stronger, um, you know. And if you're pairing it, you know, with Eye of the Storm, I I think there's a a case to be made for a really consistent hand cannon uh, for anybody who's not landing all crits. So, all right, well, that's that. I think is it. We haven't missed anything because um, I already I already mentioned Whistler's whim, the uh, yeah. the two body bow. So. That brings us to the close. Uh, and Mossy, before we before we dive into anything else, I do want to give you a chance. Um, if folks want to connect with you, follow you, hear more from you, uh, where would be the best place for them to go and do that? Uh, probably at this point, uh, Discord. If you uh, if you go to the massive breakdowns pinned link tree. Uh, the you can find my spreadsheet, and uh, you can find me posting there. I am, what is my what is my Discord name? Mossy, number four six four nine. Uh, I don't really have a, a a a Twitter related to this. I'm on Reddit as a Lego witch because I've lost my original uh Reddit account to uh the mists of time. Ah. And uh, yeah, if you uh, if you have questions about uh, the spreadsheet or want to uh, contri- contribute data, yeah, reach out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and 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 while I have this while I have this soapbox, I I think the rest of the um, Discord would uh, be mad at me if I didn't take the opportunity to say that the Carl the the Conflux Colossus is not a boss. He is a mini boss, and he takes damage differently. So don't use him uh, for damage testing if you want to compare boss DPS. This is this is the kind of info that uh, that we need in the Destiny community right here. Um, actually, any any other kind of uh, kind of good notable notable little facts like that that you can throw out offhand? Oh man, uh, people are going to have, have to some... listen all the way to the end for this one. <laughs> Um, let's see, anything handy, um, that is, like, super helpful. Um, I think people already know this, but, like, the actual damage numbers for the Touch of Thunder, um, Storm Grenade are insane. Um, it does, like, 3,300 damage in in base, like, in baseline gamut numbers compared to, um, like 1400 for flux grenades which are supposed to be the strongest like it's literally more than double the next best thing and it follows your uh your target it's it's absolutely broken yeah. uh use it soup it's also uh super nice in crucible it follows very aggressively um so yeah highly recommend that grenade in, in all content at this point in time it's it's really hard yeah. not to run it as a titan so yeah um okay all right well i appreciate it um i will be dropping some links in the description of the show so please uh check those out and uh check out the destiny 2 outgoing damage scaling spreadsheet by 
Mossy, if you are out there making videos and you are like, hey, how does this damage work in this encounter? This spreadsheet is is literally like what you are asking for and you probably don't know it. So please, please do check it out. Uh, Mossy is a super nice person and is really good about answering questions. So I uh, also would recommend uh, just reaching out directly to him if uh, if he doesn't mind me saying so, um, but I, I, yeah, I'd love to help. Um, so I, I would love to see, uh, ever more accurate, uh, videos and, and other content being shared around the destiny community, um, as a result of, uh, of what you're doing. So thank you. Thank you for doing it. And thank you for, uh, <laughs> for making the, uh, the PVP, uh, time to kill spreadsheet more accurate as well. Uh, because there, there are those little breakpoints that are sometimes wrong if I don't have the right numbers. So, yeah. All right. Uh, on the note of thank yous, I have a few more thank yous to throw out real quick here before we sign off for this episode. So first up, big shout out and welcome to Flynn, brand new patron subscribing for the first time. Thank you so much for your generous support. I deeply appreciate it. Thank you once again to all of the patrons for continuing to support Destiny Massive Breakdowns uh, as we move into a, a new era of Destiny 2. Lots of stuff changing, and uh, this uh, is, is really, it's, it's all got me more excited than ever to make uh, more podcasts and and to upgrade the spreadsheet and, and do all kinds of other fun stuff. Um, you know, we've got, we've got some build sharing stuff going on from the PVE side of things I, that I'm, I've got in the works. I, it's it's a good time. It's a good time, and I deeply appreciate the continued support. Helps justify the amount of time I spend uh, working on this stuff behind the scenes. Uh, so so do do continue to let me know uh, if, if you find value in it. Speaking of folks who are getting the word out and, and finding value and, and letting me know about it, uh, two, two new reviews this week to share. First up, five stars. Great show from a very fine gentleman uh, here in the United States. Thanks for this awesome podcast. I just started listening recently and love it. Your insights are so helpful. Thanks again. Well, thank you for that that short, to the point uh, review. Uh, I deeply appreciate it. As I'm sure does anyone who has not listened to this podcast but is checking out the reviews and trying to decide if they want to. Uh, next up, Noise Show, five stars from Zach the Awful Waffle, uh, also here in the US of A. Hey, I'm a new listener. I have a question. Before that, I absolutely love this show. I could listen to it eight days a week. It's amazing. Okay, now for the question. I'm a noob at Destiny, only 1436 Power Hunter, and I'm part of Electro Class or whatever. Uh, I'm not an owner of any of the DLCs. The question is, what is a good way to grind? I've been playing for about half a year and I've been trying to find a new place to grind. Love the show. Bye. Zach, the awful waffle. This is a good question. This is a question uh, that I'm glad I've got Masi on here for as well. I'm, I'm hoping we can we can tag team this and, and share some insight. Uh, so for me, it depends a little bit on what you want to grind. Uh, if you want to get good at Crucible, uh, I'm always saying, hey, good, just play play a ton of control to to learn the basics and then start playing threes if you want to get competitive. Um, survival is pretty fun uh, if you take it in, in doses. Um, and uh, Crucible also has some great weapons right now, especially if you are like SMGs and they drop a lot, especially if you uh, reset, they drop a lot with loads of extra perks. That's true of every playlist. So I would take a look at what guns do I love where do they drop from? And then just go do as many resets as I can in that playlist to get really good rolls on those guns. Um, you know, so if you love yesteryear, go to Gambit, right? Uh, I don't know what the Vanguard gun is this year because I don't. It's a, it's a 180, 180 uh, kinetic hand cannon. Yeah. Okay. So I don't care. Um, but <laughs> if you don't have a good, I already have so many 180 kinetic hand cannons in my vault it's not even funny um but if you don't uh then i would say hey go play go play uh strikes and um yeah so that's that's kind of the way i look at it like what loot do i want just play that a ton uh mossy what what would, what would your take be for this question i'm going to throw it to you uh i mean i think they, they've done a 
they've done a good job in PVE on, on the PVE side to sort of, yeah, let you do whatever you want and uh, reward you. I think, yeah, if you're looking for stuff to grind out, um, you know, find a, find a double rewards uh, or even a double, um, double XP nightfall week and just grind out, grind out the nightfall. Again, they've made it super easy now to, you know, bank a bunch of uh, engrams with the, with the resets and just get giant perk pool weapons. Um, if you have an, enough legendary shards, you can, you know, focus the the exact guns you want. And there's there's a great pool in in all three playlists right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely true. Um, you know, I would also say uh, try to try to tune in to what the legendary lost sectors are. Um, without the DLCs, you're going to be a little limited there. But um, you know, if there if one does come up that happens to be available to you. Uh, those are absolutely worth your time to go and grind. Some people will disagree with that statement. Um, perhaps I just have excellent RNG, but uh, aside from the Mask of Bacchus, I've gotten every exotic armor that I've wanted um, with, you know, only only a couple of weeks of effort. So um, I think I think they're absolutely worth your time. They also are a good introduction to uh, in-game level difficulty for a new player. Um, there's certainly nothing compared to like a grandmaster, but I think it's a good, a good introduction to having to think about your loadouts and and having to think about playing optimally and playing with a time limit. So I would recommend checking that out if you want to kind of level up to the next, the next thing. Also, honorable mention, especially as a as a free to play player, um, Dares of Eternity has never been better. Ooh, with, with yeah, the, you know all the guns there with their refreshed perk pools and and craft ability are primo and um you know as you're sort of doing all the rest of the the activities with the current pool set um current weapon pool um dares of eternity now has a bunch of like weapons you can't get anywhere else like all the icolos weapons are now locked behind the weekly rotation and dares um some other you know old vendor weapons that kind of stuff yeah no that's how did i not think of that man dares is uh is a phenomenal thing to grind right now yeah that might be the number one choice it's super fun too yeah okay all right well i I feel like that brings us to the close uh thank you so much everyone for tuning in this week this has been another super long episode in a in a in a long string a long history of super long episodes i appreciate you sticking with us i hope that you've enjoyed it i hope that you've learned something uh, let me know on Twitter at Destiny MVP uh, what you learned from this episode. I'd love to hear it. And you can also find all things Destiny Massive Breakdowns at DestinyMassiveBreakdowns.com, spelled just like you think it would be. Um, so no, no, no real complicated, uh, you know, uh, URLs or anything fancy, that website will link you to the Discord, which is a great place to come hang out with Mossy and the other Destiny scientists. Uh, find fire teams and all that. Links you to the Twitter account. Uh, links you to this podcast and PVE and Beneath Twin Suns. Uh, so it's a great place to get started on your journey with us. I've been your host, Kid Ketcha. My guest, Mossy. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Peace. Seven. Peace.